candidate uh, for, well, Green Party mayoral candidate, actually. I was for London, that's right, for London, Sean. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, so uh, I think it's cold and, and we need warming up, so just give a good round of applause to Sean Berry. Yay! Hi, well, thank you for turning out. I'm very, very proud of everyone who's here today, everyone who came to the absolutely enormous climate march a couple of weeks ago, everyone who's in Paris and at demonstrations all around the world, as the climate talks come to an end. And I'm, I'm hopeful with some success, although we have the rest of the day still to worry about. We have a huge reminder of the threat of extreme weather on our doorstep in Cumbria this week. But actually, I'm more positive than I've ever been before in a very long time that we as a global community might avert the worst disasters climate change might bring. And this is quite a relief because for the past few years, I've been very, very worried indeed that progress would ever come. Watching the government here sliding backwards as fast as it can, seemingly wanting to stamp out any glimpse of a sustainable future before it could come into focus. As a transport campaigner, I've seen buses cut and zombie roads and runway plans dropped in the past for very good reasons, revived and threatening our countryside and our air all over the UK. As a Green Councillor, I've seen projects to reuse and reduce waste scrapped in budget cuts, while huge contracts for incinerators to burn rubbish for years to come are signed off without a care. I've seen fracking, the most unconscionable and ris risky dash for gas imaginable, imposed step by step upon bravely resisting communities, at the same time as clean energy wind farms are making much harder to get through planning. And I've seen the solar power industry and a whole generation of community solar energy product projects facing broken, pro broken promises and cuts to feed-in tariffs at the very moment when they are ready to take off and surge into a more secure energy future. <laughs> Pardon me. What kind of government does all this? Public transport and active travel are wins for everyone, and green industries are creating the good jobs of the future. But only the interests of the old fossil fuel-based industries seem to count with them. All I've been able to see is an ideological war on anything that might give us hope and a further future free from fossil fuels. My wish, as David Cameron set off for Paris two weeks ago, was that he would meet the leaders of other countries with higher ambitions, meet the leaders of places like Kiribati and Tuvalu, whose very existence is in the balance under the one degree of warming we already have and cannot take a two degree rise, and that he would come back newly committed to the fight for a green future. I didn't hold my breath. But with or without the current Prime Minister, we can change the story here at home. French President Hollande said this morning that whatever the, the agreement says, we will not be judged on a word but on an act. He echoes the words of the suffragettes who stormed Parliament here a century ago. Deeds, not words. And here in London, we can do a lot of deeds in the struggle against climate change. We have the power to make our own transport policies, our own planning policies. We have our own budgets. I'm standing for Mayor of London alongside other candidates who claim to be the greenest their own parties have ever produced. And I hope that a strong green challenge and environmental campaigners all across London fighting hard, uh, we will see a race to the top in the election for London Mayor, not a backward side to the bottom. And if David Cameron and George Osborne won't do it, then the people of London can lead the way on transport, transport climate change, energy efficiency, sorting out our waste and clean energy. Here in our capital city, we have a duty to set the inspiring example to the rest of the world that we've so far failed to do. And finally, on the topic of inspiring examples, I want to pay a huge tribute to all the friends, colleagues and former colleagues in the Green Movement that I don't see in the crowd today because they're in Paris, demonstrating, meeting, lobbying and scrutinising the work of world leaders there in defiance of the terrorists who would like to frighten us out of all our activism. I'm so proud of them and I wish I was there too. And I'm sure you'll join me in sending our solidarity and pride to them with our red light protest in a moment. Together with our words and especially our deeds, we can beat the vested interests and win a better world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay back thank soon, you. guys.